Within the thick bushland of northwestern Tasmania, Australia, the thylacine stalks its prey. Carefully, it watches a wallaby, unaware of the thylacine as it feeds amongst the grass. The thylacine, with a body like a wolf and has distinct stripes along its sides. As it's a marsupial, it also has a pouch. An adept ambusher, the thylacine patiently waits for the perfect moment. Suddenly, the wallaby is startled by a crack of a twig. The thylacine quickly lunges out and captures its prey. The thylacine was the largest land predator throughout mainland Australia. But as humans migrated and brought dingoes, the thylacine struggled to compete for food. And they almost disappeared around 2,000 years ago. But there was one last sanctuary cut off from the dingoes on the island of Tasmania. And there, they continued to flourish up until Europeans arrived in 1803. The thylacine was declared a pest and wrongfully blamed for the loss of cattle. That was unfair. Their jaws weren't strong enough to take down even a sheep. Their numbers gradually reduced over the following century, with the last survivor in captivity held until 1936. Sightings of this unique animal became fewer as the years went by and eventually declared extinct in 1986. But today, with the assistance of cloning, the thylacine might yet have the chance to return to the bushland once more. A group of US and Australian scientists have banded together to bring the thylacine back from extinction. The first step will be to structure its genome. The genome is an entire set of DNA instructions that provides all the information to understand how an animal develops and functions. But to extract that information, the DNA needs to be perfectly preserved. Luckily, just over 100 years ago, many thylacines were stored in the right way. And luckily, they used various types of technologies, with some keeping the DNA perfectly preserved. The DNA will be used to help reconstruct a genome within another animal that's closely related. The fat-tailed dunnart, a mouse-sized marsupial rat, is the closest living relation to the thylacine. Although the two species are separated by 40 million years of evolution, this disconnection between the two is so huge that the process of building a thylacine from a dunnart is the equivalent of turning a dog into a cat. It's a massive task that involves building the genome from about 3 billion letters. The first 96% of their genomes are identical and have already been mapped. But the remaining 4% is like connecting pieces of a puzzle that's of a clear blue sky. This part will take a bit more time. But once the recipe for life has been created, the completed gene-edited living embryo can be inserted into a Dunart mother. Thylacine pregnancies only last a few weeks, but all marsupials are born a little smaller than a grain of rice, so in the short term, it can feed on its mother. But they will create a synthetic pouch that will later be used, helping to avoid any awkwardness when the thylacine grows too large for its mother. But the final result will only be 90% thylacine. With current technologies, it's impossible to bring anything back from extinction in its pre-existing form. But this new species that could be a new thylonart will definitely be an interesting new animal. Following the process of successfully resurrecting the thylacine, there will be the challenge of reintroducing it to its old habitat. Although animals have instincts, their behaviors cannot be extracted from a genome. They will need to learn how to effectively live from scratch. They'll be unsure how to feed and defend themselves, the correct way to interact with their own species, how to avoid predation, choosing a mate, and how to provide parental care. Without more of their kind to teach these valuable lessons, the process of releasing them into the wild will also take a long time. But hopefully one day, the thylacine will reclaim its place at the top of the food chain, and its return will help restore balance to the fragile ecosystem in Tasmania. It's expected to take several years until they've successfully cloned a thylacine. There's some concern about whether it's the right thing to do, given there are other animals still living today that could use support as well. The several millions of dollars spent could help save up to eight other already endangered species. But regardless of the costs now, in the future, it will be more affordable and likely a lot easier, attributed to the work that is being done today. But the thylacine isn't the first animal to be chosen for a de-extinction project. The first one was the Pyrenean ibex in 2003. 
It had only been extinct just three years before it had been cloned. But at the same time, science wasn't as advanced as it is today. And sadly, it only lived for a few minutes, then went extinct for a second time. Unfortunately, not all pre-existing animals were preserved in jars of liquid like the thylacine. But some animals like the woolly mammoth were frozen in time. Chilled within the permafrost in the Arctic for up to 30,000 years. Unfortunately, the mammoth tissues aren't intact enough to completely read their whole genome, so it won't be possible to see an exact copy of a mammoth. Elephant's DNA does share a 99% match with the mammoth, so it will be possible to engineer a new breed of mammoth by combining its genes with the Asian elephant's DNA. Ultimately, it would be more of an Asian elephant with cold-resistant abilities that's capable of withstanding temperatures as low as negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. But why go to such a big effort to bring back a hybrid mammoth? They're actually an important missing element from the tundra ecosystem and can help keep the permafrost intact. The woolly mammoth is kind of like a natural geoengineer. It constantly tramples on mosses and shrubs, uprooting trees and disturbing the landscape, which promotes the growth of plains and grasses. The smaller vegetation absorbs less sunlight than trees, which can make the ground absorb less heat, keeping the ground cooler and the permafrost intact. The permafrost has built up a massive collection of carbon dioxide over thousands of years, so it must remain there. It's estimated there's twice the amount of carbon dioxide in the permafrost than in our atmosphere. It seems like a strange idea, but this has actually been in the plan for the past 20 years, and many animals have already been introduced to the tundra. This includes bison, muskox, moose, yaks, and reindeer. And within the next decade, they hope to introduce their very first mammoth. De-extinction is considered as a fairy tale science by some experts, deeming it as a waste of money and just an excuse to show off fancy science skills. But there are positives to it. With all science, there is an expected series of trial and error, a necessary process towards eventual success. And since cloning genes and extracting DNA began, it's come a long way already with far more expected in the future. As the cloning process will further develop, it will also contribute to and advance other scientific discoveries outside of cloning, creating breakthroughs in medical science. It's expected that the cloning techniques in use could soon help with health practices, like it will help produce vital tissues and organs for humans. Cloning will also evolve the future of farming. In the past 10,000 years, selective rearing of cattle has been a continuous method used it involves selecting the best stock and multiplying them. Cloning could take this to the next level, ensuring only the best stock is born with even better attributes and also making the process easier and safer with much healthier offspring. With a growing population on Earth, it would create more security in the future, ensuring there's always enough food to go around. In the coming years, whatever process is made, the foundations are starting to support endangered animals that need a little extra help. Cloning will help reintroduce endangered and other extinct animals, rebuilding entire ecosystems. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.